Welcome to Prigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 29 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the different list controls that are available in ASP.NET. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 26, 27 and 28 of this video series. In ASP.NET, there are several list controls that we have been discussing so far in this video series like drop-down list, checkbox list, radio button list, list box and bulleted list. All of these controls inherit from list control class and this fact, you know, because of this fact, all these controls are actually a collection of list item objects and we can add list items to any of these controls in the HTML source at design time or in the code behind file programmatically at runtime and all of them supports data binding okay now let's drag and drop these controls and see how how similar it is to actually add list items in the HTML source so I have these five different controls here so let's paste this HTML onto the web form let's select that and format it properly Okay, so all we have here is the five different list controls, drop down list, uh, checkbox, radio button, list box, and a bulleted list. Now we know that all of these controls are actually a collection of list item objects. So adding list item objects to these controls is very similar. All you have to do here is to, you know, copy paste the list items, that's all. So the only difference here is the tag name. Okay, so now if you look at the design, look at that, all of them are populated with these list items. So it's very similar to work with these list controls. Okay, so this is the drop down list. We have the checkbox list with all those three list items radio button list, list box, and the bulleted list. Okay, so we have seen how to add them at design time using the HTML source, and it's very identical. The only difference here is the tag name. Now let us see how to actually add items uh, programmatically and again if we want to add programmatically first we need these tags so let them add, let's add them now okay so we have these controls here now we want to add the list item objects programmatically to these controls and obviously the way we do it is we need a method to add these list item objects now since there are five different controls do we really need five different methods one method to add list item objects to the drop down list another one to checkbox list etc we don't have to if we you know understand the concepts of inheritance properly then all we need is one method and we can reuse that method so if you look at this here I have a method called add list item list items method and this method is taking in a parameter list control remember all these controls you know drop down list checkbox list etc all these controls actually inherit from list control class so we are using the parent type as a parameter for this add list items method and what we are doing here the implementation of the method is pretty straightforward all we are doing is uh, spin up three list item objects specifying their text and value and then we are adding those list item objects to this list control and then look at how we are using this method we are actually passing in the drop down list checkbox list radio button list okay so depending on to which you know list item to which control you want to add these list items you're passing in the ID of that control and it's possible because all these controls inherit from the list control class in fact inheritance is used at its best here if somebody asks you an interview question like uh, where can you use inheritance can you give me a practical example you can give this example let's say I want to populate the list controls we know that all these list controls inherit from the list control base class rather than having different methods to populate these five different list controls we can have one method doing that and we use the base type as the parameter and when we actually use it we use the inherited type 
and we have spoken about inheritance extensively in C sharp video series. If you haven't watched that, I would strongly encourage you to watch the video on inheritance and polymorphism, which tells you that you know a base class a reference variable can actually point to a derived class object. That fact is allowing us to pass in the derived class object at runtime. Okay, let's see this in action. So first we want a reusable method. So let's create that method. I'm going to use private as the access modifier because I'm going to use that only on this web form. And let's call this populate maybe items. And then the trick here is we use the list item, the base class here. Uh, sorry, list control, the base class for all the list controls that we have in ASP.NET. So list control. And what we want to do, we basically want to create a list item object. Li is equal to new list item. And let's call this maybe item 1 is the text. And the value is 1. Let's actually say Li1, Li2, and Li3. All we want to do at this point is to add this list items to the list control. So list control dot items dot add. And we want to add li1, li2, and li3. So li2, li3. That's it. And the way we use it is on the page load. If it's not post back, We call this populate items. And then, if you remember, on the web form, we have all these controls which we want to populate. At the moment, they don't show anything because there are no list items. We want to add them programmatically. So we can pass in the IDs of those controls, drop down list 1, checkbox list 1, etc. So drop down list 1, I want to populate that. And along the same lines, we want to populate you know the checkbox list and so checkbox list one and we want to pass radio button list one list box one and bulleted list okay so now when we run this at runtime it should programmatically add you know these list items to all of the controls that we have on the web form and it works so because of the this you know fact base class reference variable can point to derived class object you know because of this fact we are able to reduce the amount of code that we have to write drastically instead of having five different methods to populate these five different controls we just have one method now Now let us see how to actually retrieve the item. Now depending on the type of control, now if you look at these five different controls that we have, you know, some of them allows multiple selections, whereas some of them only allows uh, one item to be selected. For example, drop down list, you can select only one item. Checkbox list, you can select more than one item. Radio button list, again, only one item. List box, depending on the selection mode. If the selection mode is single, then you can select only one item. Whereas selection mode is multiple, then you can select multiple items. Whereas bulleted list, you cannot select, you can only click on one item. That too, if the display mode is set to um, link button. Okay, so depending on the type of control that you are using, you can either select multiple items or, you know, one item. If, if the control supports multiple selections, then you probably have to loop through each list item and then retrieve the text value and index of that list item. But whereas if the control allows only one selection, then it's enough if you retrieve, you know, that one selected item. You don't have to use a for each loop to loop through each item. Okay, let us see again how to write a reusable method which can do that. Now if you look at this, it's again pretty straightforward. Retrieve multiple selections. There is a method called retrieve multiple selections. And if you look at this, it's just taking in a list control parameter. And then what it's doing here, it's using a for each loop to loop through the list items within that list control and then retrieving the text, value, and index. And then printing that out using this response.write method if that list item is selected. So this method can be used by a checkbox list control and a list box 
if the selection mode is multiple. It will also work with radio button list and other controls, but but this is not the best code because there is unnecessary looping through each list item. If it's a control that only allows single selection, then this reusable method works best. Okay, retrieve selected item text, value, and index. And what is this doing? We know that um, all list controls have selected item property and selected index properties. Okay, so we are essentially using that properties and then retrieving the selected item text, value, and index. Okay, let's quickly see how to write these methods and use them. So let's say private void and I want to get multiple selections and obviously we are going to pass in a list control so if it's a list control that supports multiple selections then we have to use a for each loop to loop through each list item so for each list item li n list control dot items if li dot if the list item is selected then what we want to do we want to retrieve the text value and index so text is equal to li dot text and then maybe we want to put a comma and a space and then specify value is equal to li dot value and then we want the index so comma space index is equal to how do we get the index list control dot items dot index of that list item and since index is an integer convert that to string and then put an HTML break so that each selected item will come in its own line. So that's it. So we have this one method and then we can use this method to get the selections of a checkbox list or a list box you know if it supports multiple selections. Now let's say um, we have the list box here. Let's set the selection mode to multiple. Alright, so now let's put a button control there Let's drag and drop a button control onto the web form, which when I click, I want to get maybe the selected items, text, value, and index of a list box control. How do we do that? Instead of writing, uh, you know, my own code again, we can use that method, get, what did we call the method as? Get multiple selections get multiple selections and then it is expecting a control to be passed in if you want to get the you know uh, the selections of a list box pass that in when we run this now um, and then when we select some things and then click that button so I have the list box here I have selected okay we haven't changed the text here let's change the text to item 2 item 3 and let's call this 2 and 3 just to give it some sense. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so I have item 1 and I selected item 3. I click this button. Look at that. When we click this button, it's going to call this get multiple selections method, which will invoke this method and we get the text value and index. So I've selected item 1 and item 3 and you can see the text value and index there. Now on the other hand, let's say I want the, let's run this now. If I don't select anything here, um, let's say there's a checkbox list. I select these items, I click this button, nothing will be printed because I haven't selected anything in the list box. Let's say when I click this button, I want to find out what are all the items that are checked, then I use the checkbox list instead of list box or you can call both of the methods whatever is checked you know that will be invoked and that information will be displayed so I have item 1 item 3 I click this button and I see the text value and index of those selected items now let's see how to write the method 
you know which um, supports single selection here we don't have to use a for each loop we can just use the selected item and selected index properties okay so let's call this method private void get single selections and then as usual we pass in the base class type which is list control and you need to verify if the selected index not equal to minus one if the user has not selected anything then you you shouldn't try to retrieve the text and value properties of selected item because selected item will be null and you might run into a null reference exception okay so if you want the text response dot write text is equal to how do I get the text all you need to do is list control dot selected item dot text and then put an HTML break that's it and if you want the value value is equal to list control dot selected item dot value and then the HTML break and if you want the index we can make use of the selected index property so list control dot selected index dot to string get rid of this HTML break and that's it so now we can invoke this method maybe on the button click let's say I want to get a single selection of the drop-down list I can pass in the drop-down list object or I can pass in maybe the radio button list whatever so now when we run this and drop down list let's say I have selected item 3 I click this button so item 3 value is 3 and index is 1 okay and in the previous session we have actually seen how to retrieve the um, you know the text value and index of uh, the bulleted list upon which you have clicked for example if I have a bulleted list and if I have set the display mode as a link button then you you know the bulleted list supports the click event so whenever the user clicks on a specific list item within that bulleted list then we can tap into the click event and retrieve the text value and index we have seen how to do the, that in the previous session of this video series on this slide you can find the resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.